Hey everyone, welcome to Signal Processing with Paul. In this video, what we're going to do is continue our exploration of complex numbers, but this time we're going to add a time dimension. And I find that this can be something that confuses a lot of people, so I want to go through this to hopefully make sure you understand what's going on. So what I'm going to do in Euler's expression is I'm going to add, rather than e to the j theta or jx, I'm going to add theta times t. Now I can do this by just basically substituting in the variable x to be equal to theta times t. And t is going to be a time variable or a time index that's going to go from, I don't know, you can choose some start time zero all the way up to infinity. And theta actually is going to correspond to what's called a frequency. But in this case, what you can think of theta as being is a sort of a time multiplier. It's some value that multiplies t. When theta is less than one, it's going to basically be slowing time down. And when theta is greater than one, it's going to be sort of speeding time up. It's going to be causing a multiplier here, which will basically cause these, these values to compute quicker. Now, when we write Euler's expression, one of the things we can think about is when we write this as a function of time, and I haven't brought theta in, but you can imagine what's going on here is I have a ball on a string and it's basically spinning around the circle, starting on the real axis when t equals zero and just kind of rotating around this circle at a constant rate. Pretty simple. Now, the real part of this value is basically if you were to take a flashlight, so imagine I have like a little flashlight here, and you were to take it from above this and shine a light down. It's going to be basically the projection of this point onto the real axis. Let me write this with blue. So you're basically, when you project it from the top, when you look at it from the top or look at its shadow along the bottom, when you shine the light up here, you're looking at only where it is along the real axis. So you're basically, this is called a projection. You're projecting out the imaginary axis. And at any given point here at the e to the j theta t, its projection along the real axis is just cosine of theta t. So this is basically, if you were to watch this line, what it's basically doing, what its shadow along the real axis is doing, is as this is basically rotating around, this is just going, starting here, it'll go, ooh, and then it'll go this way, and then it'll kind of bounce back. So if when we write this as a function of time, we can see it as just progressing. This bottom area here is the time axis, and for any given time index, now we have a value here. And it's very clear here, as you adjust theta, if you increase theta, then it's basically going to squish this whole thing this way. Um, so one way you could imagine is if you double the time, it would basically be the same as making this happen however many cycles it is and twice as many cycles. And I can't, you know, visualize it here for you, but you can imagine rather than doing this, it would basically be doing um, something like like this. So it'd be very, very quick. It'd be much quicker. So that's, that's how frequency works. And similarly, you can imagine the, this part here on the right is if I was to basically take my flashlight and shine it from the left hand side. So what I would instead be doing is I would be projecting this point here onto the imaginary axis. So I'd be projecting out the real axis and we would just be watching this point move up and down on the imaginary axis. And that's what it would be doing here. So when I write this as a function of time in 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 they're both real in imaginary axis and I have time going up. So this would be me looking at this graph. This is a little tough to see because now you're plotting it as a function of two two values. But really, what you end up seeing so this would be the point, um, you know, one. This would be the point j. What you end up seeing is yes, it's going around the circle. But as we plot it as a function of time, what you end up seeing is a spiral going up like this, because as the time index moves for a given time index, you're going to have some value for the real and imaginary value. So that's what you see. And then this frequency here, theta, I'm going to say theta, controls kind of the spacing between these particular parts. When theta equals one, you continue, you have a basically a full rotation in 360 degrees or two pi, but theta also has a multiple. So if theta is one half, then you would basically need to take twice as long to complete your your full rotation. So theta is kind of like your, I guess, your your frequency or your frequency multiple. So hopefully this will, if you just think about what's going on for a given portion of time, it's still progressing along and you'll have a point 
at each of these functions. But hopefully this helps you understand a little bit more about what's going on when we plot these as a function of time. And this is going to be really important when we start talking about the Fourier transform. So hopefully now you can understand the context of these functions in when we start adding the time dimension. All right, thanks for watching.